Hey guys, nice to see you. Today I am gonna go over my antique parasol collection. Um, I guess the first caveat that I want to talk about is that I am no expert. Like I really I have no idea what is going on. I feel like there are people out there who know a lot more than I do. I've done some research on the types of things to look out for for dating situations, but it's very hard to date these guys. So I'm gonna give you some rough estimates, but mostly I'm here to show you the pretty pretty. Um, the second caveat I'm gonna give you is that most of these need to be recovered. Um, I bought them off of various sites, usually eBay, and some of them are in various states of disrepair, and some of them uh, need a lot of help, and some of them don't need very much help, and some of them I just think are amazing, and some of them are like, meh. So, um, yeah, with no further ado, I'm gonna open these all up and show them to you, and I will definitely have B-roll going so that you can see them a little bit closer up and see the things that I'm talking about, but I find them very interesting to look at, um, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel if you'd like, and otherwise, let's get to it. Okay, so the first parasol that I'm going to show you is one that was sold to me as a Regency parasol at the Jane Austen Festival in Bath, and it is a pagoda, and a pagoda is this shape. Um, where you see it go severely down, curve, and then curve again. Um, it's decidedly different than like an umbrella shape, but it is an umbrella shape. The thing that I would say is, I think this is a bamboo handle. Um, I'm not sure if this is actually a Regency parasol. It is does have the length of a Regency parasol. You can see how tall it is. Like I can, it's much it's much taller than a Victorian one. However. What I would say is that it has metal ribs. These are either called ribs or spokes on the inside, and the ribs do indicate to us uh, some of the age situations, and these do have metal ribs. So that would lead me to believe that this might actually be a very late uh, Victorian parasol, like even 1890s, um, that has been recovered and can pass as a Regency parasol because it happens to be so long. Again, I'm no expert. There are probably a few people who are watching this video who are experts on this stuff, so if you would like to chime in down below, please feel free. I am super happy to have anybody comment on these if you actually know what you're talking about. The second one is this beautiful blue one. It has uh, bone tipping. Uh, it has a, an ornately carved wood handle and another bone tip on the bottom. Um, it is definitely a... Uh, folding parasol. So it folds in half and then this metal piece slides. A lot of my parasols are folding parasols. This one um, has what I would deem as baleen ribs in it. So I would say that this one actually is a Regency parasol early 1900s. It could be as late as maybe 1890. It's extremely tall. <laughs> um, which would account for some tall hair. Uh, so the parasols got bigger as the hair, hair got bigger on folks. Um, it is in very good condition. It's also a pagoda. It does have, obviously it needs to get recovered, but for how old it is, it's in very good condition. I would say that this has probably already been recovered once. All of the tips on the spokes are in fact bone and they are all in very good condition. I'm really into that. The only thing that's in not so great of condition is the connector um, metal. It's a little bit frayed, um, so the parasol wobbles a little bit. Let me do my straight parasols for you, the ones that don't fold, that I think are Victorian. So this one is, as you can see, super ratty. It's obviously shattered. A lot of these would have had tassels on either the ferrule or um, the finial um, or the handle, depending on the person's whim. Most of them don't have that anymore. I don't think I actually have any with, with the tassel on them anymore, except this one right here. And that tassel is pretty bunk. Some of the tassels I have given away to Lynn McMaster so she can recreate them. This parasol has metal ribs, or spokes, 
Um, the tips are all in very good condition. It's much easier to find ones with metal spokes because the tips can stay in really good condition because they're metal, so they don't break nearly as easily. What you do find is that these, um, the end, the ferrule or finial, depending on who you're talking to, um, breaks off more often than anything. It is uh, definitely a carved wooden handle down here, um, and this shaft is also wood. Possibly reed or cane. So I would say that this is probably mid-Victorian. Uh, what we're looking for, oh, this does have a tassel on it. Wow, it's right here. What you're looking for uh, when trying to date these is what material the uh, spokes are made out of or the ribs are made out of, um, as well as if the there's metal in the umbrella or parasol at all. For example, this one has no cover at all. It has a highly lacquered wood handle that is um, intentionally split, it's carved split. As you can see, the main pole holding the parasol together is brass, um, and it even has a little bit of a um, decoration to that. And the tip is also brass. So I would date this as very late Victorian, probably 1880s, maybe 1890s. Um, probably are somewhere around 1880s. This one obviously needs to get very recovered. This one also has an interesting handle. It is very ornately carved and lacquered. Um, I believe this one has not been recovered. Nope, it still has its original and it has a, a lining that is actually white. The um, spokes on it are metal. So this would make me think that it's later on, um, 1870s, 1880s. Um, and it's a, a weird conglomeration of a lot of different styles in that it has this wood handle. The main pull on it is definitely brass. The tip of it is wood, but it's not ornately carved. So it's a very weird parasol to me. I don't see very many that are like this because it's it's like extremely complicated on one side and then the tip of it is very, very simple. So the last one here is another um, metal with a very simple tip. Obviously the, the um, fabric is extremely shattered here, which is horrible because it means I can't really get a pattern off of it. But the handle has this interesting curved knot on it that lets you hold it. And these are actually very common. I find these knots all over the place and in different um, styles. The handle on this is definitely wood, and the pole that holds it up is also definitely wood. So, right, I'd say I would say early late Victorian. Okay, so all of the rest of the parasols that I have are carriage parasols, which means they tilt, except two, which I think are late 1890s. So I'll talk about those last. This last one here I bought because it has a beautiful canopy. It is definitely missing um, a finial at the top. Um, it is a folding parasol, carriage parasol. Um, actually, there is a difference between folding and carriage. Carriage parasols tilt, and I have some tilters and I'll show you. Um, these are folding parasols and they are a favorite of mine, but tilters have my soul. Um, I really loved this canopy. I thought it was absolutely beautiful. Um, I would love to recreate this canopy. Um, it has some very awesome details on it with little tassels. And the fringe and the color differential is beautiful. I just think it's stunning. It has a wood handle and baleen ribs. So I would date this probably somewhere Civil War time. This next one I think is very similar in that it's um, very ornately decorated. It has um, bone in the tip and at the edge of the handle. It has inlaid mother of pearl and a carved handle. And the canopy is this, I don't wanna stretch it out too much, but it has a, a beautiful fringe on the, both the top and along the edges, and the edges are scalloped, which is just lovely. Again, this one is shattered. It does have a baleen um, ribs and bone tips.
This next one is in not the best condition. It in fact has two ribs that are broken. I don't think I knew that when I purchased it. It does have a very interesting handle. The canopy is also a beautiful silk and it has um, an interesting, what I, I what I think is stone, possibly bone that has been discolored um, tip on the handle, which actually does look like it's also slightly broken. This one would need some real love. Um, it is also extra long, which lends itself to the thought that perhaps it is a uh, very early Victorian or possibly late Georgian um, because of its length and the fact that it has baleen ribs. Um, although it is a tilter, which means it does this. And this is so you can sit in your carriage and shade yourself from the sun as your carriage goes by the park. Or hide from all the gentlemen you do not want to know that you're in the carriage. All right, next we have this guy who is absolutely beautiful. I love this one. It has a very beautiful tip and handle. It's very interestingly carved um, and it's all wood. Oops. It is baleen on the inside and everything is in very good condition. There's one tiny hole in this cover that is letting this rib pop out. I could probably just tack it down and it would stay and it would be actually useful in this way. I don't love this cover. Um, I, I think it's probably been recovered. This looks like weird 70s fabric and it feels really weird. Um, I'm not completely sure if it has or not, but it's not my jam, so I will probably recover this one. Luckily, this guy, I can take a pattern from its existing cover. Next, we have this one, which is an entirely bone handled parasol. It's carved. It's absolutely gorgeous. It has, I think, been recovered. Um, the finial is a little wobbly on it, so I feel like I need to set that back in, but the um, cover does look absolutely fresh. Like there is no tearing in it. It feels, it feels new. Um, and I feel like they actually did a really good job of that. So this parasol is ready to go. Like I can go out and about with this guy um, and be ready to party in it. All right, now we come to the part where I tell you that I have 10 of almost exactly the same parasol. <laughs> they are all slightly different. There are a few who are very similar to one another, uh, but they are by far my weakness. And the reason they are is because most of them are tilters and I just absolutely love the tilters. So I am very eager to recover these and make them suitable for my costuming. These are also the most common parasols you can find on say eBay or whatever. And eBay, Etsy. Uh, they don't run very much money. I mean, I've bought some of these for as little as $15, $20. And I think I've paid upwards of maybe 80 or 90 for some of them. So it just totally depends. Uh, this one is a little extra long. It has carving on the handle and the handle does have a nice little hook on the end, which I find adorable. The um, tip on this guy is extra long, which makes me think of an umbrella rather than a parasol. That's one of the differences between the two. Um, but obviously this is not a, an umbrella. So as you can see, this is lace covered. Some of this lace is coming off, but if I was to recover it, I might do lace again. And again, it's a tilter. Okay, I have two that have, um, let's just call them balls on the ends. <laughs> so I'll show you them together. Um, this one has definitely a ball on the tip and sort of a teardrop ball on the bottom of the handle. Um, it does have a tassel cord, but not an actual tassel. It's definitely shattered and it is definitely a tilter. I can see it wanting to tilt.
the spokes in this one are metal. Um, and then it also, just push it a little bit past and it does tilt. This one is slightly different in that it has a more pronounced ball on the top and the ball on the bottom is not a tear shape, it's an actual ball. The handle is a little bit thinner on this one and less lacquered. It's also metal and also the canopy of this guy is significantly smaller than the last one. As you can see, it's the top canopy is completely gone. All we have here is the lining and it also tips. Here's one that I see a lot. In fact, I have two with very similar um, handles, so I will show these both at the same time. Uh, this one has a sort of reverse teardrop finial, um, and the bottom has a twist to it, and then it comes out and it looks like a little Italy boot, or it has like a little heel on it. It's cute. Um, this guy is super cute. It's also clearly ready to tilt. Just got to get it to line up. And it is metal. This one has a different kind of little nub on the end, which is reminiscent of a boot. And the top of it has a twist on the finial. It's a little bit longer of a parasol and I think has a bigger canopy. And I feel like this canopy looks like it has been recovered. Yep. And it is also a tilter. Next we have one with a geometric patterned handle. Kind of looks like this one has been recovered already too. Yep, it is a tilter. You can usually waggle it and tell that it's a tilter. I told you, I have 10 of these. It's crazy. Like, why do I need 10? So I can cover it for 10 different dresses. This one has a severe hook on it, almost like a little bow peep hook and a carved handle, which I thought was beautiful, and a little reverse teardrop finial. I actually find these very satisfying, I guess. This one also looks like it's already been recovered. Um, nope, it's shattered, so probably not. This one has a ball finial and a carved handle with no um, termination hook or ball or anything, which is um, kind of neat, actually. I like it. Um, as you can see, um, this guy, all of these basically have metal ribs, all of these tilters, because they're all late 1880s. Um, it has shattered on one of these, so that's okay, because I can take a pattern off this, so that's fantastic. And then it's also a tilter. And lastly on the tilters, this one has a very beautifully carved handle and not much of a finial at all. It's a teeny tiny little canopy, which I love and it does tilt beautifully.
Um, I did want to discuss the difference between these parasols, which are frequently marked as doll parasols, and what is actually a doll parasol. This is actually a doll parasol. Um, they usually fit into some sort of <laughs> carriage. The problem is that carriage parasol, people think a carriage parasol, which means it tilts, is the same as one that goes on a baby carriage or a doll carriage. But you can see that these are drastically different sizes, like if I hold these at the same height. <laughs> The canopies are way different. This little guy is super cute, don't get me wrong. Someday I'm gonna do some farcical situation with this little one. Um, I don't even know what happened to this. It just looks almost rotted out. But it was at one time very beautiful. And I will restore her at some point. Okay, lastly I have two more, which in my mind, these two are somewhere in the 1890s. The first one is this all wood, but painted white. And this is meant to look like a stick sort of situation with a little hook on the end. The tag on it says nothing about what year it is. But the reason I think that it's 1890s is because it has all metal ribs. It is definitely very long and I will continue to rip this if I make it big, but this is what the beauty of it is. Um, it definitely does need to be restored. I would like to recover it. Um, I think it could absolutely pass for a re Regency in the same way that that very first one does. Um, but the longer this tip goes, the later in years it is. Um, which is another reason I think this one is probably because it has a fairly long tip. Um, so, although this one is crazy long. Uh, so I feel like this one's probably late 1880s. Um, and they can go as early all the way up to like 1920s, but I feel like that's probably late 1880s and I could recover it and make it faux Regency. Probably don't need to. Um, I think it's beautiful as is. It also has like a fairly large canopy when compared to some of the other ones. So that's another reason I think it's probably late 1890s. And here, I think we have one that could be 1890s to 1920s. Um, it has a giant loop. It's a very long parasol, as you can see. It's basically the same size as an umbrella. Um, but it's treated like a parasol. It's covered in the same way. So um, you could definitely call this an umbrella, as opposed to specifically a parasol. Um, it has got a massive canopy, which counts as umbrella. It's just covered like a parasol and there's no way that this would repel water. Like this is a very thin fabric. Like I can see you through it. So <laughs> there's no way that this would repel water. So it, it, it had to be used as a parasol, but um, this is all wood. Uh, the spokes on it are metal though. And it just has the feel of um, anything from 1890s to like 19, I would say 1910 or so. It has that feeling like you could definitely use it as a walking cane. Um, it is at the right height to use it as a walking cane, uh, which is very popular in the Edwardian style. So anyway, I do have other umbrellas. I have an <laughs> umbrella collection. I have some that are Lucite from the 1930s and 40s um, and some other like very interesting umbrellas. I collect pagoda umbrellas as well. I live in California though, so why do I collect umbrellas? That's just really dumb. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any commentary or you absolutely know that one of these things that I said is wrong, please do comment down below and let me know. I do recommend The Delineator on Instagram. I will link him down below. He has an amazing parasol collection and he recovers them and he knows everything. So I'm hoping he's gonna watch this and tell me if I was wrong about anything. If you do, hi. Um, Megan Hensley, also from she is very frequently the Dean of Costume College, although she is not the Dean this year. She has an outstanding parasol collection. Like, it's just beautiful. And she has recovered a bunch of hers, so. Um, obviously, I need to get going on recovering parasols, which is why it's one of the line items on my to-do list. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.